I had made a pledge to the people of Pakistan to implement important industrial reforms in the country. I am now beginning to redeem this pledge. As from today, the control and command of the people over the following categories of industries have been asserted. One, iron and steel industries. Two, basic metal industries. Three, heavy engineering industries. Four, heavy electrical industries. Five, assembly and manufacture of motor vehicles. Six, tractor plants, assembly and manufacture. Seven, heavy and basic chemicals. Eight, petrochemical industries. Nine, cement industry. Ten, public utilities that is to say, electricity, generation, transmission, and distribution, gas, and oil refineries. I am determined to see that the common man enjoys the true benefits of industrialization. The system of permits and licenses has for, uh, has for far benefited only a few families. Not even the small investor has been spared the exploitation of the ruling tycoons. The wealth of the nation must be for the benefit of all the people and cannot continue to be concentrated in the hands of a few individuals. The industries that have been taken over bear upon the life of every citizen and form the base without which no industrial development in the real sense can take place. The control of these industries now rests with the state of Pakistan for the benefit of the people of Pakistan. The people are now in charge of the course of their own industrial development. Now that these undertakings are to be utilized for the sole benefit of the state and the common man, the workers must make every effort to ensure increased production and the success of these enterprises. We must dedicate all our energies to ensure maximum production and highest quality. The workers will now have a real stake in the success of these undertakings. In their own interest, they must now work harder than ever before. There is no substitute for hard work. No nation can hope to succeed without hard work. All the workers in these undertakings must pledge themselves to achieve this national aim. There is now a people's government and the people are the ultimate masters of the, of the country's destiny. They must be ever vigilant against all those who attempt by force or fraud to misguide the workers who produce the wealth of Pakistan. Such attempts must not succeed. We will not permit them to succeed. As I have said earlier, only limited reforms in the industrial field are possible in the present circumstances. It is not the intention of the government to extend control over other categories of industries. It is also necessary to make it clear that the new arrangements will not affect the foreign investment and foreign credit. We expect that after these clear assurances, industries in other categories will maintain the norms of production and performance that government will prescribe. It is our firm intention to have a happy blend of the public and private sectors. In this, I am confident the private sector will cooperate fully. It must also produce to maximum capacity and improve quality. It must treat their workers with dignity. It must not only increase the wealth of the nation at home, but bring back from abroad the hidden wealth of the nation. It must realize that everything in the country must be harnessed for the welfare and well-being of all the people of Pakistan. If it fails to cooperate of its own free volition, it will be compelled to do so. In the end, I repeat my exhortation to the working people of Pakistan to work hard and make our new enterprise of state-controlled industry a grand success.